Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. I'm confused about that, we'll see. When we've got some money, we'll see about that one and we'll find out what's going on with that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to have a look at was not in there, I want to go over to here and we want to go to the building. So we've got these new buildings, it's not Agra storage, it will be under miscellaneous I'm guessing. That would be my guess. We've got the electric charging station right there. That would be for our tractor. At this electric charging station, you can charge your electrical tractors such as the Ridge Track SKE50 Electric. So we're going to need that because we definitely want the electric tractor. That is something that we are going to be adding to our map. I don't know how many charging stations we're going to need. I don't know how long a charge will last. So we're also looking for the, there they go, there we go, we've got, it's two of them right here, we've got the shed with RTK base station and then just a small building with the RTK base station. Uh, so you can go and plonk that one down anywhere, obviously we don't own any land so we're not able to go and put it down anywhere at the moment but there we go, you've got a little tiny building like that. Uh, this helps your AI helpers to drive more precise and do their work faster. Now incidentally, you only need one. It, it doesn't like cover a certain area of the map. You only need to place one of these down and then you get an 11% boost for your workforce, which is quite a significant increase in productivity, I think. that That is a noticeable increase in productivity. I don't believe there are any other things that we need to look at in this one. We got the, like the miscellaneous. It doesn't seem to be any additional items that would be available is just the soil sampling unit and then we've got the buildings most of it is to do with the map one thing that we will look at is we will look at because i think it just like fertilizer technology right here so if i go to this one and i'm looking at the lime on there so we've we've got spreading discs that we can have or we've got the six meter spreading unit on there there aren't any other options here anywhere that one gives you a big extension on the top there's no other options on here with regards to the dlc so it doesn't look like you do any changes on there and we will just check tractors as well and see if there's anything built into tractors let's look at the voucher shall we is there anything built into the tractors about the new dlc front loader engine setup gps that's the mod bit anyway uh, wheel brand. It doesn't look like there's any extra options in order to enable the RTK thing. Uh, it looks like that is just part of the base game. That is the mod one, that GPS there. So, no. That is the Precision Farming DLC. That is everything that I can find about the Precision Farming DLC that we've got on this map. We can tell that this farmer has got an atrocious yield on his field, but I'm sure he's going to be very happy with it. I'm sure he's going to be absolutely delighted with what he's getting. And you know what? We ought to just pull in a little bit so that we're not, like, stuck right out and getting in the way of their other customers. Because, um, yeah, just because. And you... There's a very small tractor for the size of trailer that we've got right here. Right, the, the trailer that we're hitching on here. I was wondering whether the, we have still got the seed there. The fertilizer, we sent all of that back. It's a very small trailer. This is it's extremely underpowered, this one. This is extremely underpowered. For the trailer, really. Like, uh, I think we're going to struggle to move this one when he's full. But, on the plus side, I suspect that this particular trailer is going to hold all of the sunflowers that we're going to get from this field up here. So we've got to kind of play the guessing game a little bit with how much of the crop we can put into the train to send off the Felsbrunn to finish that contract because we don't get extra money from it. Or at least we didn't get extra money from it previously. Maybe, well... If there is any changes been built into that, I haven't updated it. So, um, no, I, I don't think you do get anything extra. I think you literally just have whatever there is and, uh, like, it's contract complete and that's it. We'll get over here. We'll take a little bit off of this combine so then that one can just keep chugging on around the field. It's going to be going for a while, so we don't need to worry about it for a bit yet. And 
what we can do then is go and get another contract underway and start doing something with that. We're still looking to earn approximately 100 and... Well, it's not approximately at all. It's exactly. We need $125,000. 125,000 euros. You should not be doing that. I need to go into uh, options in there. Let's increase that turn angle. Like that. And wait during unload of... Okay. Right. You carry on. I don't want to be sat underneath you while you're unloading. I want you to keep moving. Yeah, you, you've got a lot of combining to do in this field, Sunny Jim. So you, you don't really want to just be hanging around and doing nothing while we're unloading. You need to keep that combine moving no matter what. It's, it's quite important that we keep that combine moving today. And Oh, I see. I'm looking at that map now. Look, and I'm not getting the yield analysis on it anymore. That's only with the... That's only happening when I'm in the actual combine. When I, when I'm out, when I step out of the combine, the whole yield thing disappears. So I'm going to leave that tractor there with 5,000 litres on board. And then we go back to the combine. Now it's zoomed right in over where the combine is. Okay, look at that. Look, see, it zooms right in. Right where the combine is, and it's giving us a step-by-step -step yield analysis on that field, percentage-wise, you know, sort of showing where we've done well and where there is significant room for improvement. And this entire field has significant room for improvement. Fortunately, it's not our field, it's not our yield. All we have to do is harvest it and get paid to do so. Okay, so... If that one is underway there, I am going to go over here to the various different mods. What field? Field 3, where is that one? That field 3 is all the way up there. That is a big field. That's oats in there. That's going to take a little bit more work to actually do. We've got a reasonable field on there. We can, we'll get 5,700 reduced by 1,200. You know, I'm gonna, we're going to take that one. We're going to have that contract right there. So I'm going to borrow items. Don't just accept contract. We need to borrow items right in there. The mod seems to be working. We've got the weeding ones right here. Again, it's, it's, it's really not worth it. Like, I'm not even sure it would be worth doing a weeding um, one, uh, a weeding contract 700 is reduced there. 785 is reduced. Yeah, if we had our own tractor with our own weeder, possibly it would be worth going around and doing these weeding contracts. We just set hired help running and then leave it. We can walk away and ignore that. And it's not going to be a lot of money coming in from it, but it is at least going to be a small amount that we would be earning back. Right, now we want to go to our next one. We've got a, a, a rather nice-looking John Deere tractor for this mission. And we also have this combine right here. So I'm going to go to this tractor here because I need to get that header loaded onto that header trailer. So we're going to just move this trailer around a bit to bring that one down over here like that and then I can get I'm gonna have to bring this one right the way over to here I think we we'll put that one over there like that and then if I back it up this way a little bit there like that now we can get that header onto the combine bring it over and put it onto the trailer the tractor can stop there a second put this header here onto that trailer and then I can drag that up to the field with the combine we just got like one move then that we've got to make we don't have to have the tractor doing it and the tractor can come up in a little while pulling the trailer and everything is going to run lovely and sweet and you let's bring you in over here like this Lower that one down there. That's hooked on quite nicely on there, I think. And I'm hoping I've put it far enough back from the hitch that the combine is not going to be knocking the header as we're traveling around. It doesn't look like it's going to be. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze on there, but it should be okay. So I need to get this one up the field three. And I'm... Hang on. 
just double checking. Uh, oats, Felsman Grain Mill, and Sunflowers, Felsman Grain Mill. Yeah, so we, we have to take them to the Felsman Grain Mill. We have no choice on that one. Let's get you round that corner and then start on up the road. We're going to have to catch the train as well when that one comes through. I'll keep an eye out for that one. Let's see if we've got the train anywhere on the map a minute. You're doing a grand job. Right. So far, the train isn't on the map. I do have switch to trains active. So you've actually got to catch the train. The train doesn't just turn up. You've got to keep an eye out. And you, you've got to catch thing. There, there doesn't appear to be an option to request the train for turning up. Like, you, you can't summon the beast. I think it would be a lot better if we could summon him up. That that would certainly make life a lot easier, wouldn't it? If we, we could just, like, click a button and then have him summoned. But no, so we we got to... Oh, there he is. There he is. I see him. I see him in the distance. There he is. There's the train. Right. I'm going to just slow you down. I'm going to park you up on the track here, son. I'm going to park you up there. All i got to do is just switch to the train every so often. And then he'll he'll keep moving. At the moment, he's, he's just slowing down. He's stopping over there. Or we, we just, so we're just going to make sure we keep switching to the train. Every now and then we switch to the train and then he won't run away. I know that's not particularly realistic, but I figure that's probably the easiest way for us to make sure that we can keep the train here and use it. Because otherwise we could, we could be twiddling our thumbs and waiting for ages for the train to turn up. Uh, now, where's the best place to put this? I suppose really we want to get right onto the edge over here. Now, I've worked for a couple of different people. I've, I've made no secret of this fact. And some of the people I've worked for, like, we go into a field and you literally, you just drive into the field, uh, turn around a bit, get the combine hooked on like this. Um, I mean, it doesn't seem to be breaking the crop. I think that's because it's someone else's um, crop. But you, you get the combine hooked on and then you move the header trailer off out the way, stuff like that. And you, you just carry on and do what you've got to do. Right, you, you don't worry about it. But I've worked for other people who, who would spend a half an hour fiddling around on the corner of a 100-acre field, trying to avoid driving on it at all, and screaming obscenities at people for moving an inch too far because it's squashing extra stalk. In a 100-acre field, and it's, it's like, yeah... Dude, really, you're talking about a single handful of grain at most. It doesn't matter. Like, let's let's just get on with this. But, you know, the, the, that's the, the different sort of people that you can work for. Like, some, some of them are unreasonable, would be the, the most polite way that I could describe them. Um, those sorts of people I never stay working for for very long. I never used to stay, like, I would I would have some very, this vehicle tool is reserved for contract work. Well, it's a good job you're doing contract work then, isn't it? I have worked for some people that could only be considered to be incredibly, incredibly rude and unreasonable. And those are the sorts of people that I tend to find another job pretty quickly and then leave on minimal notice because you know if, if they're going to be rude and unreasonable to me i tend not to help them out a bit by giving them a lot of notice whereas i've worked for people who are incredibly reasonable and i've said to them look i am looking for other work i am planning to move i'm going to give you three months notice and you know then, then they've got plenty of time to to sort something out it, it depends entirely on the employer. So, um, yeah, and I, I recently read a post. The reason I was thinking about this because I read a post fairly recently about someone who was complaining that they kept having people leave their employment and only giving, like, a week's notice every time they were leaving. And, like, almost everybody was doing this. Um, how can they sue them for inconveniencing the company and stuff like this? This was a, a, a question on Reddit, I think it was, or um, QORA, maybe. Um, and it was pointed out that nobody inconveniences a company and walks away with minimal notice and then goes sick for the final week 
for an employer that they actually like. And the fact that this person was wanting to figure out a way to sue them and make their lives difficult because they were wanting to do this suggests rather strongly that maybe, just maybe, this person is not the best of employers and they want to take a long, hard look at themselves and what exactly it is that they're doing to cause their workforce to behave in such a fashion. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely and wholeheartedly agree with that statement. If your employees are leaving like that and just abandoning ship, with minimal notice, there is the very strong possibility that the employer is the one that is doing something wrong and not the, not necessarily the employee. Um, been there and <laughs> been there and done that. This made me chuckle at this person. It was it, there didn't seem to be any kind of like joke or anything to it. It it, it didn't seem to be um wondering in the slightest you know what they perhaps were doing wrong to drive away their top employees no it was all about how can i make them suffer and stop them from doing this i need them to stay here because it's difficult to replace them yeah it is difficult to replace them because you've got a reputation now you've got a reputation of being a terrible employer and i hear stories about businesses going under and then i hear stories uh you know and and losing out you know people are losing out on pensions and stuff like that and you sort of think yeah i i you kind of get an idea of what the people were like to work for and then you hear stories about a business that is struggling to stay afloat and employees have agreed to work for half wages for a month in order to help the company out and you sort of think to yourself, I've worked for people who I would do that for. You can't do it indefinitely. You can't afford to do it indefinitely. But I have worked for people that I would do that for. And then I've worked for other people who, if they approached me and said, we're really struggling financially at the moment, can you do half wages for a month? I'd laugh in their faces and walk away. So... When you hear the stories about this company is only paying their employees half wages for a month, um, when you look into it and you find out that actually almost every single employee is staying there for a month and working for half wages, it does make you think that maybe that company has been doing something right and maybe they have actually been really bending over backwards to try and help out their employees in the first place. So maybe they're ones that do deserve a bit of support you know I've, I've seen companies like that and i sort of thought well i wonder how i could help them out what products do they sell is this something that i would want and yada 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 you, you get the idea so there's, there's something just a little bit of food for thought just something that i was um pondering over this last few days now then mr combine driver you are herring down across this field at breakneck speeds. We're doing a wonderful job. You've got 14% in there at the moment. As we stand at the minute, we are 53% done on this contract. Now, if I was to go and take the grain that I've got right now, maybe take off the grain that is in the combine right now and go and complete that, I don't think that would, that, not yet, that wouldn't be enough. So we'll let that do maybe another couple of passes. What did I do wrong here? Oh. <laughs> I know what I did wrong here. I pressed the wrong button on here. Right, I, I, I changed that bit over. I forgot to change the circle bit right there. We'll wait until he gets to the end of the row there. And then I will switch that so it's just moving up and down the rows. And <laughs> that's what I meant to do last time. I did set it going the right way. I just forgot to take it off of the whole circling the field bit. I'm really liking this yield map that we've got here. Like, when we've got our own land, that's going to be quite an interesting thing to be keeping an eye on. Right? I think that's going to be quite the tool to be using. It's, it's going to be interesting also seeing all the other bits of this add-on that we've got. This DLC. Right, there we go. It's, it's completely free, by the way. It's just in the mod hub. Go along and you can grab it, the precision farming bit. Um, there's nothing special on it that you've got to have. You don't have to buy anything to go with it. You just download and away you go. That's it. Right? It's, it's a free DLC. 
Fantastic. That's just, just what we want. That's what we want. We want free DLCs. It keeps us interested in the game. Now then, move on over. So, you, yeah, we're, we're keeping an eye on you. We don't want you starting up and herring off across the countryside. Felsbrunn is going to be, you know, it, it, you're going to be late getting to Felsbrunn. Let's just put it that way. You're going to be late getting to Felsbrunn. You are up to 50%, so I'm going to wait till that combine gets back over to here before I worry about uh, starting to empty that one out. Uh, that one is 15% done so far. You are 57%. I'm wondering, though, that's saying 57% at the moment. Does it eventually get to a point where the percentage done on the contract doesn't get any higher. Curious about that. It'll be something worth watching at some point in the future. We won't worry about it just now. Something that would be worth watching in the future. Right. See where the combine sort of drifted out a little bit going over the track and it's made also a little red line on the um, data map right there. It's just because the combine had to travel over that bit, it's left a mark there and said this bit is also unacceptable. This bit is also a really low yield. I wonder if it, I mean, it should do the same when we get to our own land, like buying up the fields and that. It should also do something similar. The money ticking down at the minute. It's all right with the money ticking down. That will be okay. It doesn't matter because we will eventually get to the point where we've got, um, you know, we've we got more money coming in. So we'll have money coming back and then it's, it's not all going to be bad. Now, the other thing I just wanted to check is if I dump everything into the Felsbrunn, uh, it's not the Felsbrunn grain mill. If I dump everything, we've got the railroad silo east right here, which I can go and collect from. And so with field three right here. So that's a nice, easy, quick one to get to. And we'll also dump the field 16 lot into there. There is the other one which is in here in town, Railroad Silo West. And then that goes off to the Felsbrunn Grain Mill. That is the only one that we can use. The other ones we have to go into town and we, ha we have to sell stuff in there. So we've got 800 at the Grain Mill, 710 at Felsbrunn Grain Mill. And then we've got, what is it, uh, we're doing oats, aren't we? 655, so the grain mill, just plain grain mill, that one is giving us up, that's over here. That's not very far, that's right up against field 16. A little bit further to go for field 3, but that's not too bad. Um, and that's giving us our best price of both of those crops at the moment. So that's an interesting one to keep an eye on. Okay, you are just about ready to go, so let's, we'll ignore that combine, let's just go to the train, make sure it doesn't start up again, and then this one right here, I'll let him keep going on round the field rather than starting him moving up and down, actually no, we will go start moving you up and down right now, I'm just going to do that right there to get to the end of the row, um, oh, I, I just pressed H on there, I didn't mean to do that. Let me do that again. Right on the very end of it, right there, that's, that's just kind of making him think three times about what he needs to do here. Okay, he's... Which way is he going to go? He's going to be able to do that, all right. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine! And um, because I turned it round just there, I need him to go back down to the other end of the field before I can take the grain off. So we'll run down here, and then we can take off that first load. I'm hoping he will get to the end of the field before he should do. We've got an exceptionally low yield on this field, so he should be all right to get down here before the tank is full, and then we can empty that one, and then we'll go and empty the other one. And I'm thinking we'll go and deliver those sunflowers. As you know, we won't we won't deliver deliver. What we'll do is we'll take them and we'll put them in the silo right there, just at the end of this field. And then when we've done that, we'll just we'll just hold them there, and then the rest can go into the trailer after that. You know what? He's doing fine. Let me go to this one. Uh, let me just flick to the train a second, just to stop him from driving off like that, and then go to you like this. Oh, that one's got to get back down to the other end of the field as well. Right, we're going to have too much in this trailer. 
Um, no, actually, we probably won't have too much in this trailer, to be honest. I don't think we will. We will be able to just go and put this down here. Let's turn you around. Have this run, and then what's left in the field, that will be fine for going through there. So let me go back over to this one and unload that combine right there. This first full trailer will... Yeah, the, the first full trailer on this one will go straight into the silo over there. And then the second full trailer that we get, that one, we'll, we'll just have to see how much we've done with the percentage of the job complete. Because remember, the act of just combining the field, that's only part of the job. We've actually got to make a delivery of grain, and they get very upset if you don't deliver the grain properly. Right? They do tend to get really ticked off with you if you, you don't deliver anything. Um, that they'll say that the contract wasn't complete. Something I did forget to do was go and, like, set up so that I can give myself some fixed penalty notices if we do something wrong. I was going to get a load of, um, weights and put those out and then give them a negative cost so that if I have to sell one immediately, it, uh, gives me a neg- I'm not sure if I can actually sell them if they give a negative cost, though. I think it will force a, a sale, but I, I, I don't remember. Right, it was you I wanted to go to, and then I want to go back to this one. The combine's already turned around, so let's go and get that, quick. And then I think I can get away with sending that bit off the Felsbrun, and the, then the job will be complete, so we will, we'll unload this down to the end of this row, and I reckon what's left in this field will end up being stuff that we can sell somewhere other than Felsbrun. So let me just take this off of here. I'm, I'm not going to bother taking this one up the road up there. I can run this one into town. Can't I? It doesn't really matter either way, does it? It's no difference. And there's that one. Okay, we've got 14,000 litres of sunflowers right here. There's the... I think those fences don't actually have collision. I'm still going to drive out... Where is the fastest way? It is actually out this road right here. Um, because I'm halfway between the two. I go out here. And I go straight down this way. Oh no. This road down here has got like... There's a, there's a field right in the way. Between me and where I go and tip. There's a field in the way. That's a bit inconvenient. Is there a track? There is actually a track that goes... No, that only goes across one field. Then there's another field in it. It would have been quicker to go to the other silo. Definitely would have been faster to go to the other side. Well, we're, 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 we're committed now. We'll have to take this one. Let's go down this way. At least we're not going to get stuck behind any cars. It's quite comical, I think, in this game that we get stuck behind cars. we we'll run you down here. Let me... I'm, I'm getting paranoid about this train now. I don't want this train driving off anywhere. Although we will drive it ourselves in a minute. We're going to... I'll do that while the other one's tipping out. You can stay right where you are. You are absolutely fine right there. You, let's go. Parking up on the road is probably not the best thing to go and do. But I think that we're all right with that. Now, we need to be indicating to turn... Well, unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. So while I sit up here and enjoy this view and a well-earned break, could you please consider taking a look at the links in the description down below? We have Nitrado, who provide gaming servers, who are very, very reliable, and they provide us with a server on our Discord channel. And there is also Fanatical, where you can buy all kinds of different computer games for various different platforms. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.